Today we are going to look at the different MCS rates offered by 802.11n. Then we're going to look over the different data rates we can achieve with each MCS rate using different 802.11n enhancements. And finally, I want to teach you an easy way of memorizing the data rates for each MCS rate. This will be useful when taking different tests offered by CWMP. The 802.11n standard states that data rates up to 600 megabits per second can be achieved. An MCS index value is given depending on the amount of spatial streams, modulation type, and coding rate of the transmission. There are 32 different MCS values. These values are 0 through 31. The 802.11n standard also offers many enhancements over its predecessors. Each MCS value has a total of four different data rates depending on what 802.11n enhancements are being used. The enhancements that affect data rates are 20 versus 40 megahertz channels and long versus short guard interval. I want to point out that 40 MHz channels are not recommended in the 2.4 GHz range due to the limited amount of channels available. Listed in the chart are MCS values 0 through 15 and their data rates. Looking at this chart can seem daunting, especially if you're new to 802.11n. For each MCS value, you can see the data rates increase depending if 40 MHz channels or short guard interval is being used. Some of the questions in the CWNA and CWDP tests will ask you about a certain data rate based on an access point's capabilities and best practices. It is best you memorize these MCS values and data rates. And don't worry, you don't have to memorize every single one of them. Just memorize four in my magic formula and you're all set. These are the only four data rates you need to memorize. To move down the data rates for a given spatial stream, all you have to do is add the BPSK data rate or the QPSK at one half data rate. Let B stand for BPSK and Q stand for QPSK at one half. The formula for going down the list is B plus B plus B plus Q, plus Q, plus B, plus B. So let's take 6.5. If you add B, you get 13. Add B again, you get 19.5. Add B once more, and you get 26. Add Q, and you get 39. Add Q again, and you get 52. Add B, and you get 58.5. And finally, add B again, and you get 65. Another trick from going from BPSK to QAM 6456 of the same spatial stream is to simply times by 10. And finally, the last trick I have is going from one spatial stream to two spatial streams. All you have to do is add the single spatial stream value. Now let's look at an example question. An access point operating at 2.4 GHz with capabilities of two spatial streams and a short guard interval is being deployed. Following best practices, what would be the highest data rate possible for the AP? Okay, let's break this down. The AP is capable of two spatial streams, so let's cross off the data rates with only one spatial stream. The AP is operating at 2.4 GHz. This means we would not use the 40 MHz channels, so let's cross them off. The AP is capable of a short guard interval, so let's cross off the data rates that include the longer guard intervals. Now what does that leave us with? 144.4 megabits per second. I hope this video has been helpful and you are able to memorize the data rates for your test. Good luck to all and study hard. 
This video is brought to you by Sean Rynearson at WiFiGeeks.com.